Okay, welcome back. So let's look at actually now solving some binomial problems. Okay, there's, there's lots of different ways that we can do this. Um, we've seen these functions that we can plug into with pencil and paper, and that's fine, it's doable, but uh, so there, there are some cumulative probabilities that we would really rather not do it that way with. Um, some textbooks do include tables that you can do this with, but tables aren't always a great way of going about it because often they only include specific values of P and only up to a certain value of N. Okay, so really when we're solving binomial problems, yes, we want to start by understanding how to plug into these formulas, pencil and paper, maybe using a calculator if you have to, right? But I think the best ways of doing this, a more visual method, is, is going to be graphing this in something like Minitab. But once you're, once you're comfortable with the concepts and you're comfortable plugging it on paper and you, you can picture it in your mind, um, I think Excel is the quickest, easiest way of doing super simple functions in Excel. All right, so let's check out an example here. So we've got, we're, we're checking some, some water for a pollutant. And we've established there's about a 10% chance it has the pollutant. We're taking 18 samples. We want to know the probability that two contain the pollutant. All right, so before I go into a problem, now imagine we didn't know this was a binomial problem. Right? There's those four checks that I need to be able to recognize. Okay, so I'm seeing, all right, we've got a fixed number of trials. Um, I can assume independence. We got a 10% chance of probability, and there's only two ways this can turn out, right? Either it contains the pollutant or it doesn't. So we are looking for here the probability of x equal to 2. Okay, we have established that this can be a binomial random variable with parameters as follows. So one way I could do this, I could simply plug in to my binomial form. It's totally doable to plug in and just find one value. All right, but I also want to show you, once you're comfortable with plugging in with this pencil and paper, practice with that a little bit. But the other thing I can do is I can plug this into Excel using this binome dist function. So I want to show you how to do that. Okay, so I've got three things that go into a binome, right? I've got n, n here was 18. I've got P is 10% or 0.1, and I've got X. Here it happened to be 2. Okay, so my binomial PMF, right? So this, I can type in binome disk. Look at the arguments it has here. So number S, that means number of successes. Here that'll be X equal to 2 for us. Our number of trials, that's N equal to 18. Our probability of success, that's 0.1. And now notice our last argument asks us, do we want a cumulative probability here or not? Right? Do we want, in other words, our PMF value or our CDF value? Right? Well, remember, we're asked for the probability of containing 2 and it's exactly 2 containing the pollutant. Right? So that means that we, that we want our PMF value, not the cumulative. Right, there's a few ways I can indicate this to Excel. I can type, so you see it's a true false, it's a binary function. I can type in false, I can click false, or what I like to do, you can also just use one or zero. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a zero here. But don't get that mixed up as some sort of numerical argument, right? It's just that one for true, zero for false. It's just easier to type in one or zero than the entire word. All right, so that should match up with whatever we found here by plugging it into our form. All right, so let's keep going with this example. Say we want a cumulative probability. At least four samples contain that pollute. Okay, so I can use what I know about my probability rules. So at least four means x greater than or equal to 4. All right, so now that means 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way up through 18. It's 
The only way you could do it is plug into your formula a whole bunch of times. Now, I probably wouldn't want to do that. I could flip it around using my complement rule. All right, so in this case, that would be 1 minus. Now, remember when we flip these around, we got to say, all right, everything greater than 4 would be 1 minus everything less than or equal to, not 4, but 3. All right, I could do that. Then I would only have to plug into my formula for 0, 1, 2, and 3. Still be a lot of work though. So for, for most cumulative probabilities, I'd recommend using using some kind of technology. Now remember this this complement rule can really help you in a lot of cases. It may make a problem that at first glance doesn't seem doable by hand, might make it doable by hand. Okay, but we need one minus the probability of x less than three. So let's jump back to six. I've got Similar parameters to what I had last time, except a different value of x. And I don't want my PMF value now. I want a CDF value. Right, so remember, we wanted x. x was 3 here. So when I plug into binome disk, I want 3, 18, 0.1. But now instead of putting in a zero, I want a one, because I want a cumulative probability. And we got this answer that's less than or equal to three, but remember we were actually looking for greater than or equal to four, which is one minus this. So this should give us our answer there. And again, if we know what we're doing, we can just plug these, these probabilities in with our binomial function. But cumulative probabilities, I think, are it's very useful to kind of visualize these. So Minitab is a good option to visualize this, this kind of thing. So let's look over here in Minitab. So if I go to graph, now there are a few different ways of doing this in Minitab, but we're, we're using Minitab as a visual tool. So if I go to graph probability distribution plot, just view single, and by default it will be on the normal distribution. So we'll, we'll use that a lot. But right now, we're using our binomial. Okay, and there's two parameters. N is 18. And our probability is 0.1. All right, so I'm going to click OK. And Minitab gives us this graph. So one thing I can do to find PMF values, you can just kind of scroll over the bars on your, your graph here. But we want a cumulative probability, so I'm going to double click on the graph, double click on these bars, and I'm going to go to shaded area. I'm going to give Minitab an x value, so the x value we wanted was greater than 4, and I'm going to tell it I want the right tail, right, because we wanted greater than or equal to 4. So this should match up with the probability that we found in, in Excel and by plugging it in by hand. Right? So here's the steps if you want to recreate that. And our graph, I think, really helps us kind of visualize this situation. So another type of problem that we might see with the binomial would be some kind of in-between two numbers, some sort of interval. All right, so again, thinking about it, well, how could I understand this by doing it pencil and paper? Everything from 3 to 7, that would mean 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so one way you could do it, plug into that formula five times. Right, that's, that's how we're doing it up here. Or you could try to use some CDF values. So how would I do that? Well, we know x could be anything from 0, 1, 2, 3, and what we want is 3 through 7. Okay, 8 all the way through 18. Right, well, here's what we want, 3 through 7. So less than or equal to 7 would give me everything here. So what I really need to do, if I want to use my CDF, take the probability of x less than or equal to 7 and subtract 2, 1, and 0. All right, so again, be careful with what you, what you put in there if you want to use your CDF argument. So that's one way we could do it in Excel using CDFs. Right, the CDF at 7 minus the CDF at 2. But... Let's look at this over in Excel. So Excel has a nice function actually built in to the new version. 
called binome disk range. All right? So if I tell it 18 trials, probability of success. Okay, we first put in the first number in our range, so that was three. We then put in the second number in our range, that was seven. And we don't have to worry about putting a zero or one for cumulative because Excel recognizes that, yeah, this is a cumulative probability. So that should give us the same answer as if we use subtract two CDFs. Should also give us the same answer if we go to mini tab and have it highlight a middle area. So our middle area between three and seven looks like this. So that should match up with whatever we found in Excel. All right, so lots of different ways to solve these problems. And I think trying in different ways really helps you, uh, helps you understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so let's look at another example here. So say the probability of a freshman graduating in four years when they, when they enter college is about 77%. Say you're following a group of 12 freshmen throughout their academic career. So we saw in the last example how we had a whole bunch of questions about the same scenario. So say I come into a, in, into a situation where I know I've got a bunch of questions that I want to answer. One good way of doing it is building a binomial table. Okay, first of all, we want to check our conditions. All right, so do we have a fixed number of trials? Yes, we had, I believe, 12. Students were watching two outcomes. Yes, they either graduated or not. Probability of success, that was our 0.77. Are they independent? Yes, we can assume each student's success is, is independent of others. All right, so, so what we're going to do in this example is go ahead and build out that entire distribution. And Excel is really good for this. Okay, so first we got to list all values of X. Then we're going to find their PMF values using 0. We're going to use their CDF value using a 1 in that function. Okay, so let's go over to Excel and build that. So, X could be, with the binomial, anything from 0 to N. So the nice thing about Excel is I really only have to do stuff once. It picks up on patterns, okay, and then I can just drag down. N was 12, so I can drag down to 12 here. Okay, now I want these PMF values. So I'm going to use binome dist. My number of successes is whatever's over here. My number of trials, that was 12. My probability of success, 0.77. And I don't want cumulative. I want PMF values here. All right, so that's, that's some really, really small number. But I'm going to drag down. And these are all essentially zero. I'm going to drag down to get my, my probabilities here. So I've got all my PMF values. Now let's try CDF. Now to calculate a CDF, you could sum up the existing cells, or I could say binom dist. I want this number. I've got, again, 12 trials, still probability 0.77. But this time, I'm going to put in a 1 there. So notice your first CDF value will always be the same. Your last CDF value will be 1. And the rest can be very useful to us now. Alright, so this is our finished product of our binomial table. So pretty simple and easy to make in Excel. But the nice thing is now I can use this table and just go in and grab probabilities. Okay, so what's the probability? 10 out of the 12 graduate. So x equal to 10 using our table. Just grab that PMF value at 10 there. Super simple. Right. B, less than half. I need to translate that to probability notation. Less than half is less than 6. It's actually less than or equal to 5 since we have CDF values in our table. Grab my CDF at 5. There's my answer there. All right. C, 8 or more. Again, I want to use my complement rule here. Using my table, find my CDF value at 7. 1 minus that gives me the answer I'm looking for here. Finally, between 7 and 9, okay, I can again use my table. I could use my CDF at 9, subtract the CDF at 6, or 
just sum these three numbers. That's very easy as well. So hopefully you're seeing how easy, if I, if I pre-make this table based on what I'm given in the situation, hopefully you see how easy that is to then solve our problems. All right, the other thing I want to do for this example is find our mean and standard deviation. Okay, so we know how to find the mean and standard deviation of a just general discrete random variable. Right? I'm going to add another column here. Insert. So we take each value, weight it by its probability, do that for all of them, and then sum it up. Right? So I find an expected value of 9.24. But remember, what if what if you didn't have Excel, right, and you had to find this expected value? Or even if you did have Excel and you had to, it takes a little bit of time, right? Well, n was 12, p was 0.77. All I really have to do is say 12 times 0.77, and it gives me the exact same answer, okay? So if I recognize that I can use my binomial formulas makes it super quick and super easy. You could do it the long way, and you'll find that you get the exact same answers for mean and standard deviation as well. All right, so I hope that was helpful in giving you some methods to solve binomial problems. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.